Hi friends, in this module on life prediction, uh, which is part of uh, risk-based engineering and uh, it is a very good utility in the sense that it supports our physics of failure approach. At the same time, if required, we can collect few data on, for data-driven uh, data approach also for PHM. So, um, so here uh, we have this uh, topic that is life prediction and assessment approach. I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde and uh, I am from uh, Homi Baba National Institute and uh, uh, we will focus on uh, some aspects. Uh, we will compare them because we will know the gain of new approaches only when uh, we will uh, review our old approaches and how they have done so well so far. Uh, but then you know improvement is always a uh, continuous process and we are suggesting something. So there will be some sort of a comparison with the traditional approaches uh, on uh, you can say quality through quality assurance program uh, and uh, how uh, uh, earlier time what was quality now it is um, it is something like uh, uh, risk base and uh, you know uh, life testing and uh, life of the component uh, which is what the products uh, they are they are evaluated in the market and uh, even also in the industrial environment so traditional approaches will review um, and from there we'll try to see uh, what is the gain made in fact we'll not one to one compare old new approaches because uh, time is a constraint, but at least one approach I will take that is uh, in service inspection program today, and in, in service pro inspection program using risk based that is the risk based engineering approach uh, that we are trying to uh, discuss about and uh, trying to uh, reach how uh, what are the advantages in this approach compared to the uh, uh, traditional approach. And then uh, state of the art in life testing approaches. Uh, traditionally whatever we have and role of light testing in POF and PHM we have seen already and advantages and limitation that overall we will try to go through by discussing. So major approaches uh, in quality assurance. Uh, uh, quality assurance uh, is considered as uh, reflection of assured life though it is not related to time. Uh, quality quality is a, not a parameter which is a function of time but then uh, almost like 30 to 40 years uh, especially in for complex engineering system uh, there was a uh, huge confidence on quality once the quality is ensured that means component will be reliable that was a uh, inbuilt assumption over there and I think it has worked well. So let us take the backdrop of quality and quality assurance program which was directly or indirectly was assuring directly or indirectly the performance of the component in real time situation. Um, and there we had this uh, quality assurance program uh, because time factor is not there in the uh, that one. So it was periodic inspection that we would do on different type of inspection and we will ensure, ensure that our system or product um, even though uh, with even if we take the aging um, as a component uh, it is uh, it is uh, it is able to perform uh, as per the expectations. So uh, but then in between this probabilistic risk assessment uh, uh, through reliability approaches and all it got matured and then uh, that is what our subject that is risk based engineering came. And one of the uh, one of the uh, even the uh, established technique uh, is PSA induced or uh, PSA uh, enabled uh, risk base in service inspection program. The traditional program was uh, there uh, for uh, in service inspection that was based on some qualitative attributes on likelihood and consequences. Now we have risk based in service inspection program risk based surveillance and test interval program because uh, all the safety systems have to be um, ensured that they are in poised state when the systems are operating in a normal condition. So that assurance we get from testing periodically uh, especially periodically either uh, during the plant operation or during shutdown preferably. So um, th that testing ensures okay system is available and when it is demanded it will be it will get uh, activated and uh, serve the purpose. So, but then um, this was based on some qualitative uh, criteria assumptions, component testing, 
um, uh, to, to a great extent and then uh, we'll say that the system is poised. But then uh, after having this uh, risk-based uh, program or framework, uh, this particular thing also was revised and nowadays risk-based uh, surveillance and test, STI, it is called RBSEI, SBI, uh, risk-based in-service inspection and risk-based maintenance management. These are either reliability-based maintenance or risk-based maintenance. They are picking up. Why? Because uh, because world over there is a there is a feeling that these techniques they provide um, a better platform uh, for improving uh, uh, reliability and uh, safety both uh, and then uh, other system like you know in normal operation operator advisory systems and all so slowly a scenario is uh, scenario is emerging wherein the uh, risk component is being used in most of the activities that we do uh, earlier through traditional approaches. So let's look at the chart. What is la life, uh, life prediction uh, assessment approach? Uh, one component is testing and then second is simulation and prognostics and health management. So testing and qualification, traditionally we have uh, non-destructive approaches, um, uh, NDT we call and uh, their uh, qualification screening condition monitoring and in service inspection these were the major uh, component of that one then it was a accelerated testing accelerated testing was basically uh, uh, rate of uh, acceleration and stress uh, acceleration and highly accelerated test these were the three uh, we'll we'll discuss uh, this uh, live testing accelerated live testing uh, high um, um, uh, stress screening and all those things and then finally, uh, we, lend, uh, we, we, we see that we, are, we have moved towards prognostics. So in this whole uh, scenario, um, where traditional uh, and uh, simulation, which is relatively new and prognostics, which is the emerging technology that has been coming over here. So let us start uh, reviewing these techniques and let us see what gain we have made through this, uh, this presentation. Uh, In-service inspection is basically an activity which is periodic in nature. Um, the frequency is decided by the uh, analyst and uh, whether it is annually or what, uh, you know, uh, once in a year or uh, tw uh, twice in a year or in four, uh, uh, something like once in four year or five year, those kind of things. Uh, normally, people go by experience and what is the, what are the uh, codes and standards they are telling and all that. Now in this, uh, what is important is one is the frequency and second thing is the kind of inspection method that we use. So one is visual inspection which is uh, uh, for, for a good uh, part of the components visual inspection is carried out that means periodic, periodically uh, the, uh, the, the experts or the staff they will physically it's like you know uh, visit the uh, area and uh, have a look at it is there any visible sign of uh, degradation or anything or uh, you know performance uh, noise and things like that <clears throat> then the second thing is edit uh, uh, edit current testing so edit current testing also they would like to see whether there is a, uh, there is a <clears throat> sign of any defect or crack which is there through through the thickness and all that so um, and then radiology uh, radiographic testing radiographic testing is basically uh, gamma source cobalt 60 is involved liquid penetration testing uh, basically it is a surface red on sur from surface if any not in the bulk but surface magnetic particle and uh, uh, liquid penetration test both are the approaches that are used at the surface level uh, some cracks or something uh, and then uh, other, there are many other techniques that are used. But I think if we discuss this uh, uh, six techniques or five techniques, that, that will be good enough uh, to get a get a feel of it. What was there uh, earlier and what is being done now? Now uh, uh, these approaches, visual uh, and liquid penetration test, are very versatile and generally applied to surface defects. Okay. And uh, ultrasonic testing, yes, it goes to the bulk also uh, and, uh, and deep inside if any cracks are there, uh, probably we will get an idea that there will, there will be, uh, there is, is similar to uh, radiographic testing. And ultrasonic probes, ultrasonic, ultrasonic probes are widely used in measuring material thicknesses. Um, because one of the degradation mechanism is, uh, is corrosion. So if 
the corrosion related some thickness reduction is there then we will come to know uh, uh, okay uh, some uh, some there are some sort of thickness reduction is uh, and then it is reflecting on components capability to uh, bear that uh, stress level uh, uh, emerging from the uh, fluids that is being uh, uh, contained into the uh, pressure boundary. Uh, then radiographic testing, uh, there is also inspection performed on bulk and, uh, and uh, the coverage. Uh, but it, this particular radiographic testing because of the nature of this uh, uh, technique, uh, it is a large area is covered actually you know. Uh, magnetic particle testing also generally used for uh, for magnetic material uh, like for aluminum or some material uh, it will not be possible. Magnetic particle test test is generally performed for uh, magnetic material. Limitation of this technique is that it can only detect surface crack uh, and uh, it's not possible to go into the uh, defect getting precipitate or your loan at the bulk level actually. So and then. Um, so these were the techniques that they were being used, uh, but then after the uh, 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 you know uh, uh, use of this risk-based approach uh, internationally, there is a consensus that uh, uh, using the risk-based approach, the uh, resources that are consumed, whether it is manpower, whether it is time, or whether it is uh, equipment. Uh, uh, they are uh, they are getting reduced because the number of points that need to be performed on they are reducing. For example, one uh, one nuclear plant they saw that the number of points we we got one fourth compared to so suppose if they had uh, 300, it came down to less than 100 or so point. And every for everything there was a justification and uh, because uh, why these approaches are becoming popular. Unlike the traditional approaches, here the uh, quantitative uh, statement of re, uh, likelihood and frequency, uh, which goes into um, uh, goes into this one uh, uh, for uh, prioritization and identification. So that means we have a robust approach for prioritization and admission. So so uh, the way we say that if 20% components are uh, addressed, then 80% of safety is uh, uh, you know. Uh, captured or ensured. So this kind of thing is going into this approach and uh, the benefits are many and now um, they are being used uh, progressively for many plants uh, on routine basis. I will not say routine basis but there is a active interest uh, on using this, uh, these approaches. After ISI there is a condition monitoring. Now condition monitoring and PHM they have some overlap. Uh, in the sense that condition monitoring uh, also senses uh, signal uh, from the subject uh, component being monitored and from based on that signature uh, it uh, either produ produces like vibration. So it produces the vibration value and if there is an increase in vibration value that will be sign of that there is some, uh, some uh, bearing related issues or uh, you know other any other issues uh, lubricant related issues they are there. And that is an indication, but it is a very subjective one. Uh, so now in PHM, we have got an algorithm uh, which is validated, verified, and all. So we get a superior knowledge. That means, uh, in nutshell, if I have to put it, um, the experts are being replaced by because the kind of knowledge which is there, it is embedded into the uh, embedded into the computer, and they will they will tell. Okay, uh, the acceleration levels are this much the uh, velocity signatures are coming to this level so and then uh, uh, taking into account the noise level or you know low oil quality level this bearing uh, is at the verge of uh, you know failure or whatever and corrective action can be taken so there are vibration level temperature shaft runout alignment this kind of parameters they are being monitored including the oil quality uh, and uh, uh, parameter which are uh, related um, in fact, sometimes motor current signature also provides a very uh, important because pump uh, has got a motor and this motor current signature monitoring itself provides a health monitoring, monitoring uh, signals, you know. And uh, so these are various techniques that, we, that is used and what PHM does is it takes the same signal and it, uh, uh, it applies the uh, filtering, feature extraction, uh, optimizing um, uh, and you know. Uh, learning mechanism so that the computer itself becomes um, not expert but it becomes an advisory system. And then in this uh, way 
the reliability and safety issues both get benefited because we knew the advanced information uh, through even condition monitoring uh, we take the corrective action um, and then uh, we get the, there is a gain uh, in terms of increased reliability and increased safety or uh, in overall uh, risk reduction uh, which can be measured actually so overview of this lecture is uh, we are we were trying to compare the old method with the new methods and uh, how uh, the um, slowly slowly there is a convergence and the, uh, in uh, the traditional methods there is an upgradation in terms of risk based uh, uh, risk based maintenance risk based uh, um, in service inspection uh, risk based quality assurance so all these things because we we are able to rationalize all our decision okay so ndt techniques we had, we have discussed how traditionally it was and what kind of improvements are being done uh, and we discuss risk based uh, in service inspection i have not gone into the detail of risk based isi because this is one of the application that will be discussed in next lecture so all the details will be provided at that point of time that's why i kept just a qualitative discussion my myself limited to this qualitative discussion uh, role of condition monitoring and, and uh, um, requirement was also discussed phm is an advanced form of condition monitoring as after the sensor data is collected the phm provides information on degradation level and uh, that in turn uh, uh, statement of um, remaining useful life uh, along with the uh, uncertainty uh, which was which is there with this one so if the uncertainty bounds are in acceptable range uh, we can have that confidence okay uh, uh, this readings are credible and uh, now you can take a decision Thank you very much.